I had such a great time watching this movie. I just wanted to get up and dance, which I thought would be rude to the people sitting behind me, but it's it's a lot of fun. It is. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I'm curious with such a, a beautiful, magical film about the importance of family and with so many characters and so much culture and great music and so much going on, what makes this film special to you and what does being a part of this mean to you? I mean, gosh, it just... (laughs) So many things come to mind because this film really encompasses a lot of what I strive for and what, you know, what I've worked so hard for, which is for my family, you know, to keep my family together, uh, to honor my family and all of the things that I do and sharing my gifts with the world. You know, it's everything that, that, that I've done. Um, And of course, being from Colombia, having my family being from Colombia, it's, it's incredible. It's an incredible honor to be represented uh, in this way, uh, especially on a, on a, in, in a Disney film. Right. I mean, That seemed almost impossible, especially when you think about the kind of representation that a country like Colombia has received um, in the past, which is mostly negative. And, you know, it's so counteractive to what I've actually experienced in Colombia, which is exactly what you guys see in the film. The love of family, the colors, the music, the food, all of those flowers. the the connection to magic um, and and that belief um, is very much embedded in our culture. And so to see it represented in this way is a dream come true. When this character was presented to you, what was your reaction to her, but also whether or not you could embody her? Oh yeah, no, I I um immediately I understood why I was cast as <laughs> Isabella because um you know, I, I, (laughs) I am her a little, you know, I, I feel like I, I watched Disney movies and I watched Disney princesses and, you know, I sort of like lived in that magical fantasy land as a kid. And I sort of always wanted to be a princess. And, um, you know, any, any time my mom told me that I was a princess, I, I truly believed it. And, um, you know, it was something that I really desperately wanted to embody, but yet I didn't understand what really makes a princess, which is um, what you feel inside and your courage to speak up for yourself, um, your ability to change and to make mistakes and to be human, right? Not just this like physical embodiment of a princess and the twirls and the making flowers and all of that, like my, uh, much like my character. Um, you know, beauty, beauty isn't just what's aesthetically beautiful and, and what's on the outside. It really is, should, and is um, what you have inside. What was it like to see what she would look like, what her gift would be, and to hear yourself bringing her to life? Yeah, it was a surreal experience, you know, because it's, um, (laughs) to see a character, um, from, this place that you were, you know, from Colombia, I was so afraid that like, I wasn't ever going to be understood, you know, like, as far as like, when I would try to talk about what I, what my experience was when I would go to this magical place, you know, but it was rarely portrayed um, in film and in storytelling in this way. Like I couldn't really, you know, put words to, or a feeling to what I saw. And so to see myself be a part of something so monumental um, it was uh, just an incredible feeling, you know, an incredible sense of uh, accomplishment, you know, on, on my part, as far as like, you know, wishing that, that something like this could happen to me and, and putting, putting myself first in the ways that like I allowed myself to dream and allowed myself to have this opportunity, you know, it's not easy to, to be here and to get here and to, and to get to um, tell a story like this one. So I'm incredibly grateful and yeah, feeling so blessed. Everyone sees Isabella as the perfect magical. And I love how this film also explores the weight and pressure that comes with 
having to be the one that everyone expects to be perfect. And at the same time, her perfection is just a little bit annoying, which makes it easy to understand Mirabelle's frustration with her. <laughs> yeah. you ever want to roll your eyes at her perfection? I mean, were there ever times where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe she's acting like that? No, because, um, you know, so perfectionism is obnoxious. It is annoying and it's not good for anybody, you know? So I, I, yeah, I had to take that sort of like burden of an unlikable trait, but it's, it's true. And um, perfectionism is annoying and it's boring and it's, you know, it's not good for anybody. And I'm so glad that even though, um, you know, she expresses herself in this way, that, that is a product of what this notion of perfectionism does to a person. It makes them shallow. It makes them empty and you can't really see who's really there. And that's why I really appreciate my story arc because you see her, break free from that. And really you see what, what is the key ingredient to breaking free from, from perfection, from these ideas that society imposes in you is love. Love makes you free, break free from that. And it's the love of your family. It's the love of Mirabel and Isabella. And so I think it's a beautiful message. You're also a part of another very unique kind of wacky and wild family with Doom Patrol. What has it been like to play that character and, and explore someone so unique in that way? Uh, gosh, it's been a really great opportunity for me to explore certainly so many different versions of myself and so many different emotions. Um, you know, like Isabella, she shows kind of, you know, mainly a few, a few emotions, but mainly one that's like hiding. Whereas Jane on Doom Patrol really can't hide a lot of her emotions because that's all she is. And um, yeah, it's been an incredible opportunity uh, to, to, to bring a story like that to life. You know, that show is so grounded in the absurd, you know, in, in possibility. I mean, it's, it's quite magical as well. Um, so I, I, I feel very fortunate to get to explore the theme of mental health um, through a superhero story. It's unlike anything out there. So yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty cool. <laughs> And what did you love about the music? I mean, how exciting is it to get to, to do songs like this? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, Lin-Manuel is, is just an incredible uh, steward of, of this gift and, and you know, a, a great storyteller of our culture. I hope that, um, that we see this as, as um, you know, an example of how much more there is out there and what the possibility of, of more is. Um, and I just hope to see uh, more people telling stories like this, writing more music. Cause there's, I mean, you, you heard this, you heard that uh, the, the music from that, that Lynn created using the richness of our culture. There's so much more out there. So I, I hope that this film invites more of that. Well, thank you for talking to me about it. I love all of these characters. They're just so much fun. Thank you so much.